plan the design that you want to do and then allow it to evolve. I think the first, I don't know if I would tell people to ask themselves some questions. I'd give them some tasks to do. First task would be to collate images that they either love or they absolutely hate. Because then what you can start to do is sift through and the more images you get, you can then start to make connections with what it is about the image you like. So something might look pretty, but it might look pretty because you like the shape of it or it's because you like the color of it. Just because you like a green sofa doesn't necessarily mean that in your house you would want one, but it might be the shade of green that you like, or it could be the fabric that it's in, or it could be the shape of the sofa. So that's what I think people need to do more of. They need to do more of that, allowing themselves to play a bit. You know, like children, children are great. I sometimes feel like a child inside actually when I'm doing interiors, because that's how it makes me feel. When you're a child, you've got none of these, none of these barriers to doing anything have you because you don't know that the fire is too hot until you touch it so then you touch it then you know but the children's imagination is endless and as an interior designer i think there is an inner child which enables me to have that endless amount of creativity so it's giving people need to tap into their inner child and their inner creativity so start by doing mood board doesn't need to be fancy doesn't need to look great just a pile of yeses and a pile of noes It's not a big no-no because -no, I've done, I've bought things on impulse. Some of them have worked and some of them haven't, so they're no longer here. The planning for me is the excitement, a bit like the build-up to Christmas. I'm more excited about the build-up to Christmas than the actual event, a bit like I prefer pigs in blankets to the actual dinner itself. So I think when it comes to interiors, the, the planning does help because then you'll see if things match, you'll see if things go together or you'll see if things that you like things together before you actually make that purchase. If you don't like it when you get it home, that's okay. You can take it back and get a refund, but just look at what it was that you chose. There was something about that item that you really loved. What was it? Was it the reflection it gave? Was it the shape of it? Was it the color? Was it the size? There was something that made you go towards that. Question what it was you liked about that, and then you'll be able to find it in something else if that wasn't the thing that you wanted. everybody forgets about the ceiling. I think you can have real interest in a room with a ceiling. And I've actually, I'm planning to do it in my own home. And because it's all open plan, obviously I need to make sure that I've got the same kind of theme running through, but I want something to feel like it's there's some ele an element of surprise or interest. And so to make a room feel smaller or more intimate, you could you would use darker colors. So what I plan to do is actually have the wallpaper on the ceiling to bring the ceiling down. So it will make it feel a lot more snug, even though it's open plan. And I guess that that's, you know, that's what you can do by using color. You can change the, sh the shape of a room. Every decision that is made about the house is a joint decision. So just because I've got the idea, he's, he, I essentially treat him like the client to make sure that he's happy with what I'm suggesting. Our two styles are quite different. They do complement, I guess that's why we're getting married. They complement one another really well. So he, he loves antiques. He really likes old pieces that have got a story. And I do but I also like really clean things and I like things to look right. So, you know, with some antiques, obviously they have wear and tear, which is great because they tell a story. Um, but when you buy something brand new, it's like, oh, but that, look at that, that's beautiful. And that will one day be an antique, but right now it's new. Uh, in our house, we've mixed both. But for me, that's what makes it a home because it's both of our personalities in the same space. And then what I'm able to do is, is through the color, through the texture and through all of the patterns is to bring all of that together so that it is a house of two styles, but in one cohesive way. I would say be brave and do it. If you've been thinking about it for a long time, it means you want to do it. Do the things that you know you can do get a proper tradesperson to do the things that you can't because if you do it and you do a bodge job you'll hate it you'll end up saying to yourself i knew i couldn't do it so 
I ruined it, so I shouldn't have done it in the first place. But get out there and just have a look at what there is. Instagram is brilliant. Um, follow me on Instagram. Um, you know, look at all the th stuff that I do. There's no end of interior designers on there. And just look around, just be observant as to what it is that interests you and, and, and take it from there and just give it a go. And start small if you're worried about replacing a sofa that you're not sure you're gonna like and try stuff. So go and try the sofa. Um, sit on it, lie on it, stick the cushion under your head. Is it comfortable? Can you touch the floor with your feet when you sat on it? All of that kind of stuff before you buy it. If it's, a, if it's an expensive purchase, I would always say try it. Stop worrying about what other people will think of what you've done. They don't live at your house. It's your house. It's what you like. So just go with that.